this. Okay, so we'll talk about clustering. Now, clustering is supervised or unsupervised? It is unsupervised, right? So clustering is a is an unsupervised learning algorithm. Okay. And the purpose of clustering is to find patterns in data. Okay. And based on the pattern, you group them. So again, so if you have to talk about uh, clustering, okay, think of the example which I had shared the other day, right? Uh, we said that when you have those fruits and you don't know the names of the fruit, but still you could group them. You can group them based on uh, the characteristics, isn't it? Their shape, size, and things like that. Okay. So, um, so what we do is we group different data based on the size. So, uh, there are a couple of examples that we can talk about the like recommendation engine, right? So, when you log into, say, Amazon, and Amazon has to recommend a product for you, right? It says that people like you all have also bought product, right? So it uses clustering behind, okay? And then it tries to group similar customers, okay? So if all of us falls under same group, okay, then it means we have similar pattern, we have similar behavior, okay? So we, you know, and then if I buy something that will be shown to you all as recommendation, when you buy something, it will be shown to me as a recommendation, right? So so, you know, so clustering is, uh, as it says here, clustering is task of dividing the population or data points into number of groups such that each point in that group are similar in nature. Okay. So one other example is, uh, okay, the retail store. Uh, when you talk about stores, um, it could be your uh, store like, uh, say, any any store if you take maybe you know lifestyle and uh, you know so now they carry different kinds of product right and they are almost like in every city and all over India now how many kinds of products will they carry what kind of products do they carry right so what kind of products do you carry now uh, so for that purpose okay we need to understand that okay it is the people living in Every area is different. You know, you don't have to go beyond your city. Look at in your city, okay? The kind of people live in a particular area is different, right? You have areas where you probably, you know, the rich businessmen would live. Maybe there could be an area where there's more of, um, uh, you know, college students might live. There could be an area where there is um, maybe mostly retired people live, right? It's old area where, you know, mostly... People who settled there would be like 20, 30 years back. Now they are retired, right? So every city has this kind of area. Now, if these are the majority of the population in that area, the behavior of people, you know, the kind of products that they buy would be different, right? A retired person would buy something which is much different than, you know, a college goer, right? So now if you are a lifestyle, okay, and you are responsible for managing the stores, when you put your store in area A and area B, you cannot have same product, okay? And for that matter, you can check, you know, you can go to the different lifestyle stores, okay? You'll find our shopper stop store, you'll find that the kind of products they have, okay, the price range, the quality, all would differ, and they are, it is differing based on the customers that come to their store, okay? So now how do they know which store? Now they might have 700, 500 stores across India. It is impossible for someone to plan. Say, ultimately, which kind of product will go to which store? Okay, has to be a decision taken by some individual, right? Some human being. Now, you cannot have that personalized, uh, you know, that where you are handling each store, right? If you have to handle each store, and, you know, so you have 500 stores, so 500 into that many number of products you have to handle, right? If you sell 100 kinds of product and, they have definitely more than 5,000, sorry, 500 to 1,000. In smaller store, I'm talking about. Big Bazaar might have 30,000 products, 25 to 30,000 products, okay? We call them SKUs, stock keeping units, queues. So they will be different, okay? So they have to make so many decisions, right? Now, if you take our toothpaste only, should you have 
50 gram toothpaste or 100 gram toothpaste or 200 gram toothpaste. That's each, each of these are different. Forget about the brand, even same brand. Okay. And in, in the brand also, they have um, company also have different brands, right? Colgate will have 10 different types of brand, right? And in each brand, okay, so each company you have, each brand under that you have, under that you have various sizes, right? Variation, what we call them, right? So so you have to decide, right? Okay, Colgate, um, I don't know what they have, something, you know, that brand, you need to, 50 grams, I need to buy 50 pieces, 100 pieces. So there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. Now, if I have to add one more level of complexity that, okay, each place so it's going to be, make it more complex right one second thing is as i said you cannot say okay no i'm going to sell okay x kind of product only whether people buy or not obviously people will not buy okay so you have to include that decision into your analysis now you know where the store is so what they do is okay instead of looking at entire thing all the stores as one variable or looking at each store as individual variable that again complex so they will say, okay, let me see, okay, which stores are similar in buying behavior. What kind of people uh, come to that store? It is possible that store in a particular area in city A could be similar to a store in particular area in city B, right? Though it could be in different cities, it could be in different part of the country, but they might have similar behavior, right? For example, a store located next to university in say Hyderabad could be similar to store located near university in Bangalore could be similar to in Guwahati or Delhi or Bombay, right? So, so they might, though they are in different cities, they might exhibit same behavior. So the job of these guys is to figure out, okay, which stores are similar. We call them a store clustering, okay? And you will say, okay, I can only handle 10 variables or I can handle 15 variables. So give me 15 different, you know, groups of stores. So this algorithm will take the you know, data of, of buyers, okay, um, data, and then it will group you into 15 stores or 10 stores, okay? You can decide N on your own, or you look at the data and you decide N, okay? So simple example is, okay, now let's say if um, I am wants to conduct CAT exam, right? How many centers should it decide to keep? It can say, okay, one center, everybody has to come to one place. Now, if they put one center, okay, everybody has to travel, right? So cost of travel is will be very high, isn't it? So instead they say, okay, everybody at their home, okay, nobody has to travel. Now, if they say like that, then it becomes difficult for the, uh, you know, organizing uh, team to manage it, right? Because you have to have invigilator at everybody's home, right? Even if it is online, you know, you need to have someone continuously monitoring to make sure that nobody is cheating or things like that, right? It's not possible. So instead what they do, they'll say, okay, we will have 15 centers or 20 centers. How do they decide how many centers? Obviously based on people that apply and they look at, okay? They make sure that people travel least, isn't it? They don't have to travel. You know, if, if from a city, if two people applies, it's difficult to have a center. But let's say 500 people applies from that city, it could be easier for the committee to have a center, right? So similar to that, you need to understand that you need to under, you need to create these different groups, okay? And based on that, you say, okay, this group, okay, is behaving similarly, okay? So this is what we are trying to say in this part. And... When you create this group, as I said, you don't need to know the names, isn't it? In the, all the examples which I gave, we don't have to name the group. As long as you know that this group is similar, I can call it as A, B, C, or I can call it as 1, 2, 3, or I can say A1, B1, C1, whatever, right? So name is not important. What is important is what kind of product they are interested in. Okay, same thing. When you have, let's say, you come up with uh, blog articles, right? Or you come up with videos, okay? If you have to promote your videos or blog post, right? You need to figure out the characteristics of people who will be interested to read your blog, right? If you have written a blog on cricket match 
and you are you are promoting it uh, to people who loves politics probably you may not get even one view right yes there may be people in politics who might like sports they might come to you but you are not getting benefited out of your promotion right so you need to figure out what is the characteristics of people who will be interested in reading your blog and based on that only you will promote it so 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 you know there are a lot of there are many applications where you need to figure out the group of people okay where you don't need to know whether it is yes or no right but you need so we you know we say unlabeled class right so labeled class is where you say label it one yes or no here it is not required okay so now if we talk about types of clustering we have two types of clustering okay we say hard clustering and soft clustering hard clustering is that every data point will belong to one of the given clusters one of the given clusters that's why we call them group is clusters okay so store like store clustering right store clusters so you have uh, you know so you create different groups so we say that every point let's say if you have 100 points okay or 100 stores each and you create five clusters Okay, each cluster, each of the stores will belong to one of these clusters. Okay, it has to belong to one of these clusters. That's called hard cluster. Soft cluster is based on probability, so it may not belong to. So, so what you can say is, okay, higher the probability. Let's say you know you have a point and you try to calculate. Okay, and you have five different groups, right? So you have five different groups. Now see. When you look at the characteristics and when you create a cluster, automatically from that cluster that there will be some kind of, um, some set of uh, characteristics that will come up, right? So for example, the fruit example itself, which I told you, right? Let's say you don't know the names of the fruit and you have to group them, right? So you will say, okay, a banana is long and um, uh, you know big, a grape could be small and round, Okay, so these are your characteristics, isn't it, that you associate with uh, different fruit, right? So apple could be round, but not perfectly round. You know, it's bigger than um, grapes, right? So, so you come up with those characteristics, isn't it? And based on that, only you're you're grouping the fruits, right? Oh, these two fruits have similar characteristics. You group them. So in soft clustering, what we do say is we say, okay, point one, okay, has Characteristics which is similar to like which is like forty percent of A, twenty percent of B, ten percent of should be totally hundred, right? So you know, so it might have forty with A, thirty with B, you know, twenty with A, ten with um ten with D, right? So it's possible, right? So here your 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 data point okay does not belong to entirely to one group. Correct. It it belongs to multiple groups. But if you have to place them into one, you'll place it in a group where it is maximum matching, right? 40% group A. So you'll put it in group A, right? So this is called soft clustering. Soft clustering is based on probability. Okay. So okay, so exactly you don't have that particular okay group will or particular you know, characteristic or data point will belong to specific group. That is called as soft clustering. Okay. Okay. Now, how does clustering is based? Clustering can be based on connectivity models, centroid models, distribution models, and, uh, you know, you have density models. So I'll talk about, okay, one such example. Okay. And then you can guess uh, that, you know, how um how um um you know how you can use uh i'll use center okay i use space uh, what you call as um uh, you know uh, connectivity model okay i'll call connectivity model now when you talk about how many centers to have uh for for cat exam that is kind of based on connectivity models okay you look at the distance that it has to travel and same thing okay we can replace with centroid or density or distribution okay so i'm going to go to ms paint and we'll talk about it
Okay, should be able to see my paint now. So <clears throat> let's say you have um, you have points like this. Okay, so let's say these are the points and you need to group them. Okay, we need to create clusters. We need to find cluster which points are similar. So, we, uh, so you know, uh, I'm going to use what is called as K-means. Okay, K-means algorithm. K-means algorithm, you have to define K. That is number of centers. Okay, how many groups you want. And there's a mechanism which I'll talk about. Okay. Uh, to know what is the best number of k okay this is very similar to you know um what uh, you know you would use for um, um for um, deciding how many centers you need to have okay so let's say these are candidates and let's say these are the location okay now you can only afford to have uh, four centers let's say you can only afford to have four centers so so initially what it says is you create your four centers anywhere randomly, anywhere randomly. So I can create a four center here, center here randomly. Okay. I can create close to this also. Randomly you create. Okay. So I created this cluster four centers here. Okay. Now yeah. connectivity model, you look at the distance between this point and the center. So uh, so what happens? So you start creating a group. Okay, group based on the distance. Now this point is closer to this one. This point is closer to here. This point is closer to here. So what you'll do, you'll create a group like this. Okay, you create a group like this based on, let's say the distance. Distance. Yes. So you might get a group like this let's say okay so you might have okay so you ended up creating four groups what we are saying is okay all these points belongs to this group center okay one center these all points are similar so they belong to one group here so after doing okay step one start with four random uh, uh position right to create four center because you need four centers k means number of centers k we are taking as four <coughs> Sorry. so you take Sorry. so you take four uh, you know uh, four dots and you know uh, four centers and you gr group them based on distance now this grouping is based on distance in connectivity models based on centroid in centroid method based on Distribution and distribution method based on um, uh, what was the last one? Um, last one was um, uh, density. Yes, density, right? So density, you also talks about the weightage. Now here, I'm treating that all these points are equal. In distance, we only focus on distance. Assuming that all these points are equally important. Um, when you talk about density, okay, we also talk about the weightage. Maybe you know, this store is bigger than this store. So probably, you know, you will have double the weightage for this. So you also look at density. So so how do you decide which point should belong to this point is based on that particular attribute. Okay, so let's understand with uh, uh, connectivity. Then exactly the same thing is done. You just, instead of replacing connectivity, you replace with centroid or density or distribution. Okay, so you started creating this group here. Okay, now since it is uh, connectivity, okay, now so you move this dot to a point, okay, to a location within this center, in th within this, where it is. See, right now, if you measure the distance, right, on average distance, let's say, is five. Average distance is, let's say, five kilometer or whatever. Now, okay, now you see, if I move this to somewhere here, right if i move this dot to somewhere here the average distance will come down isn't it the average distance would come down to 
maybe three or four something. So you move your point to that, you know, within that circle. Okay. So I'm moving it, this point. Okay. Similarly, I'll be moving. Okay. This one also to a point. Now here we have only two points. So equal distance between two points. Will we come here? Okay. This might come here. Okay. It might come here. So now you are changing this these values to a point where it is average distance is minimum. So you need to find a point within this group, within this group. Okay. This group it has nothing to do with other groups until now. Step one. Get four, uh, you know, based on the number of centers you want, get those many points and put them anywhere. Second step is group them based on distance. We're talking about the distance uh, distance formula or distance type of uh, uh, algorithm. Okay. And these points will be uh, grouped under those, uh, you know, those many centers that you have decided. Step three is move these points within that group to a place where the average distance is minimum right so you are moving it here great now once you move it here again now this ungrouping has happened so remove these groupings okay so you are removing the grouping now you create another set of groups now so this see after three steps okay after first round okay three steps let's say forms one round your uh, centers have moved to a new location so now the centers have moved to new equation. Now you start forming a new group. So maybe, you know, these are part of one group. Okay. This is part of this. Right. Now again, this is gone. Right. So maybe now what happens? This group, I'm just drawing. Okay. Happens. And this again forms one group. Right. So once you move the distances, form another set of group based on same formula of distance. Obviously, since the group has, the you know, center has changed, there will be some reshuffling. Some points will move from one group to another. Do it. Now, again, you move the point to a location. Again, you shuffle it. Again, you move. Form the group. Again, you shuffle. You keep doing, okay, till a point where there is no movement possible. Okay, so even if, if you move the center and ungroup it, and again you group it, you will end up getting same groups. So after this, your algorithm will automatically stop. It is possible that, you know, it can take 1,000, 10,000 steps, right? So you also pass a variable to the algorithm saying, I don't want more than 100 steps. So this shuffling will happen. Okay, okay, and maximum 100 times. Okay, so if within 100, if you are able to find the group, it will stop. It doesn't have to go to 100 times. What you mention is maximum steps. So maximum steps, if I say 100 or 500, this shuffling, reshuffling will happen. Maximum number of times, that is, you have mentioned. Uh, if this, the groups are not yet decided, but if groups have decided in 20, 30 steps, it will not, it will stop before. It will not go on to 100 steps. Okay. So understood. This is how shuffling, reshuffling happens. Okay. Your distance has to move. And finally, you'll say, okay, these are the number of groups that I have. Very clear. Any question on this? No, sir. It's okay. clear. No, sir. Okay, great. So now I'll take an example and we will see. Okay. How to implement it. Okay. So this is called K means. Okay. So K means algorithm works this way. I don't know why I mean why jam is stopped us for it once again. Right. 
Let me know. You can see my pie charm. Can you see my pie charm? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, um, there's uh, there's a inbuilt data set. Okay, there are some libraries which have data sets. Okay, so we are going to use one. So in sklearn dot data set. Okay, you have. Okay, so I'm going to say import make blobs. Okay, so make blobs will have data set which we'll use. Okay, inbuilt data set, and you can. You can, of course, replace this with your own data, right? The pre-processing part has to be exactly the same, okay? That's it. So you have make blobs, and then I'm going to say import matplotlib dot dot pyplot, okay, as plt, okay? So okay, we'll we'll plot and we'll see how things change. Okay. So now we are going to create our x and y data using make blobs. So make blobs will create us. Okay. So how many samples you want? How many data points you want? So you have n samples. So n samples, I will say three hundred. Okay. Now number of features. Number of features. That means data will create such a way that you will see two groups. And if I say, you know, two features, it will create two groups. Okay, now here we have, um, okay, so how many features? So you can create, okay, we'll start with two, okay. And, um, okay, so see, what is features? Your feature is X value, isn't it, right? So how many values do you want to give on X, okay? Now, if I, Y will be one, right? Now, if I give two dimension, two values, two features, it becomes two dimension. If I give three, it becomes three dimension, right? So I want to have three columns for X. So I'll say three. Then you have what is called as centers. Okay. So how many centers do you want to create? So if I, so it's, it's artificial data, right? So if I say four, the way data will be created or designed will will be for four suited groups. Okay. So what we'll do, we will say four. And then when we run this algorithm, we'll try to run with three, four, and five. So we'll see, you know, how uh, algorithm will group. So it's, it is suited for four centers. It, it's artificial data, right? So it's it will be suited for four centers. But we'll try to fit into five and three and see how data will change. Okay. So I'm going to say center equal to four. Okay. And um, yeah. Okay. This should be enough to create data. Now, if you want to see the data, I'm going to plot, scatter plot. Now, since you have two features, okay. Scatter plot can only show you two features, right? So we are going to miss one. So I'm going to take X zero and X one to plot the scatter plot. So, x okay all rows and column zero this is your one axis and i'm going to say x okay uh, all rows and first column you can have second column also okay and plt dot show you can add all the other things right label uh, title edge color, marker, okay, uh, the size, how big the point would be, all those things you can do. But I know I'm just taking these values to show you the output. So this is going to create, okay, this is running wrong file, okay, wait. I need to run this particular file, isn't it?
So you see this, I said center equal to four. So the way data has been created looks like center, right? So now if you look at this data on your screen, you can easily know that this particular thing is one group, below will be another group, the center will be third group, and this will be fourth group, right? Okay, so we know this. Let's try to use our algorithm and see. Okay, and end of today's session, I'm going to give you projects also, eight projects which I want you to practice. And these eight projects will have code also. Okay, and I want you to practice, finish it off in next one week, 10 days. And then I'm going to give you new projects for which you'll have to think and write the code. Okay, but these eight will be, see in the class, we are not taking large data set because for two reasons, because here our focus is to learn the concept, right? Not wait uh, uh, for the data to process, take time, right? That will take longer. So instead what I have done, I have created those data set, okay, which will have, um, you know, uh, there's one which has one lakh uh, rows also, the other data set, which I want you to practice parallelly. Since we are, today we have done all the three basic algorithm, okay? Uh, regression, classification, and clustering you should be able to practice. Out of eight, I think two are related to visualization. Okay, so, um, okay, try with those. And six belongs to, uh, you know, uh, this. So, just try. I'll, I'll share it. Okay, the location where... <laughs> where you can get all those files. Okay, so now I'm going to create our cluster. So, I'm going to say from sklearn dot cluster import k means okay now your k means okay object equal to your k means right i need to pass some values so you pass how many clusters you want okay so okay we designed the data set for four clusters right so now we'll see how does it will fit if I, we give five clusters. I want to say I want five clusters, right? So, and initially, how do you want centers to be? I'll say random, okay? Random anywhere you start the center, okay? You can give your max iteration. It's called max iter. Max iter means if it's not able to find, right, how many, you know, what is the max number of times it should run, right? I can say 100, 500, 200, 300, whatever, right? I'm going to say 100. Okay. That's it. Now, let's run it. So, now this is going to create your values. Okay, this is object, right? Now, we have to do predict, isn't it? Fit predict. So, I'm going to say y pred. Okay, this is the Okay, the cluster actually. So, I was a pred. Let me use cluster or something. Okay, to indicate that it's not predicting the value, it's just grouping the value, right? So, I'm going to say km dot fit predict. Okay, fit predict, and you provide x entire x. This is where the clustering is going to happen. Now, you want to see the cluster, we can again say plt dot scatter, and this time instead of x, we will use. X, y cluster, right? So I'm going to say scatter x of, okay? Now, x of y cluster, okay, belonging to, okay, zero. So now see, is the, we said n equal to five, right? So it's going to create five clusters and they are called as zero, one, two, three, four, right? So cluster zero, cluster one, cluster. So I want to find cluster zero first. So I'm going to say cluster zero. And here you have X value, right? X value is zero. And then I'm going to say Y on Y axis, right? Y axis also cluster equal to zero. That means I'm first, you know, printing cluster zero. And I'll say here Y is one. Okay, and I'll put some color to it. Okay, so I'll say here, color equal to, say, blue. 
Okay. You want to name it, you can name it. I'll call it as label. Okay. Equal to cluster. I call it as one or cluster A, let's say. Okay. So we have cluster A. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, do the plt dot show right so plt dot show see remember i have only asked it to predict cluster one i'm printing only cluster one two three four i'm not printing no i mean sorry cluster one means cluster zero right one two three four we are not predicting so let's run this and see i'm going to run it okay no, say this. Okay, so this is randomly created data set, which is again center four. Okay, let's create data set with center four, but I want this data set to be clustered into five and asking me to show only cluster one. So only cluster one is shown here. Okay, so I will close it. Next, I'm going to create others okay so so five cluster i said right so i have to have created five data set three four five so this is cluster zero this is cluster one two three four oh no this is your x-axis right this is the cluster zero one two three four this is the cluster number right this is so we have three uh, features right so this is first and second you can say even two you want to see the second feature you can put it two we can only have two in a scatter plot isn't it so zero one two three four you want to call it different clusters we'll call it as B, C, D, E, and color blue, red, green, black, and we'll call this, let's say, um, orange, let's say. Okay. All right. Now, if you also want, okay, let's run it and see. Okay, so this is the data set that you see, four clusters. Now, these four will be classified into five groups, right? Same data set. So, you see what it has done? It has clustered all these as red, orange, black, and this one it has divided into two parts. Now tell me if I create three, can you guess all the centers will be created? Okay, if I had said three, if I had said three, right? So this orange and red would be clubbed at one because see this black and this uh, green blue is far off from here. So the best way yes. is to club this orange and red as one this black as second group Just and three. yeah and then green and blue as one right if i say center three okay so this is how clustering works now question comes how do we decide how many centers we need to create isn't it so we have something called as distortion distortion is your average distance so what did we say Okay, you so what you have to do is you have to create one center, two center, three center, four center, five center, you know. Okay, you have to try with multiple centers. So let me go back to paint here. Should we have to see a paint, right? So you you will have on x axis, let's say number of centers. Okay, one center, two center, three center, so on, number of centers. And this is average distance average distance between center to each point. Now, if I use only one center, the average distance that it will travel or, you know, distortion we call it as, will be high. 
will be somewhere here. Right? Now, when you create 2, it will come down, right? So, it's like this. If you have only one center for CAD, average distance traveled by every student will be much higher, isn't it? When you create two centers, average distance travel will decrease. Yes. Now, if you have three centers, it will again decrease. Okay. If you have four centers, again, it will decrease. Okay. So, it will keep on decreasing. Okay. This will keep on decreasing till you become, you know, um, till it becomes N. Let's say if I start with 300 points. So, till like, you know, uh, if there are 300 students, if then you create 300 centers. That's when this, you know, this value will be zero, right? Till then it will start decreasing, right? So what we do is we draw this, this called distortion plot, okay? You see here, from here till here, there is a drastic decrease. But after this, what happens? There is a decrease is there. Will You will find a decrease, but it is not that much. Okay, so we say that, okay, this is the right number of clusters. So you have to create clusters with center 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to N. Maybe you can create up to 30, 40, okay? You don't have to go to 300. And you see the, mis the minimum distance. Of course, minimum you cannot say because minimum will be when you go up to number of clusters. But after a certain point, there will be a drastic decrease in distortion. Okay, after a certain point, the distortion is decreasing, but not at that great rate. Rate. So we, this is called elbow method. This looks like elbow, right? You know, so from your shoulder till your elbow, your hands will drop faster. But from uh, elbow, you know, your uh, this looks like you know, this looks like your shoulder, isn't it? Attached to your shoulder, and this looks like elbow. So we call this an elbow method. Okay, where you find that the distortion is decreasing, okay, but it's not decreasing to that much. So in K-means algorithm, you have to plot distortion and see what is the best number of clusters. So I'm going to go back to our program and we'll see how to do that, okay? So I need to calculate distortion and how do I calculate distortion? I have to create clusters for or, you know, for many number of centers, right? I'll put starting from 1 to, let's say, 20, 30. I can go up to all the way up to 300. But I'll not go up to 300. Maybe I'll go up to 40 or so. So I'll create, um, you know, a list. Okay. Empty list. I'm going to add the distortion value to it. Okay. And I'm going to say max centers. Okay. Equal to, let's say, 30. Okay, so for I in range, okay, for I in range, I don't have to use zero, okay, so I'll start from one, and I'll say max centers, right, so one to max centers, okay, now I have to create our logic, okay, so this is your k-means, now number of clusters should be I, correct? Okay, now this is done. After this, I need to, I don't have to predict, right? But fit is to execute it. So I have to call execute, okay? I don't have to predict because I'm not going to display the prediction value. Okay, fit is enough. Fit what? X. If I had to display, then I could have used predict also. Now, once you have this cluster done, okay, then I need to, capture the distortion. It's called inertia. Okay, there's a variable called inertia. So I'm going to say our distortion dot append. Okay, and here I'm going to say km dot inertia. Okay, variable. So now for every cluster like star center 1, 2, 3, it will find distortion and it will put it into our distortion variable. Right now, you can draw. So, after end of this loop, you will have distortion with 30 values. We can print distortion. Okay, so I'm going to say distortion. Okay, we can see the distortion value, and at the same time, you can plot this elbow method, elbow diagram. So, I'm going to say plt dot plot. 
okay and here we have 30 values right so i'm going to create range here okay so range one comma max center so, so remember it will plot only up from 1 to 29 right because when you say 30 okay it will only go from 1 to 29 right if you want 30 to be included you should give 31 so one comma max centers okay so this is going to range generate range of values okay so this will be on your x-axis right what i just created is x-axis one two three four like up to 29 now i'm going to create distortion this will be your y value okay so y value is anyway um okay um your like uh, uh, list with 29 values and then i'll give a marker so marker you can give uh, as let's say zero or whatever right so i'll give small o okay so it will plot o there so plot is ready now we'll simply print the plot so show the plot right plt dot show let's run and see what happens so see so four cluster right so if you look at elbow method it should give us four as the indication of number of centers right okay so see we created five centers right this is how the now values were clustered into five now let's look at the for each of these 29 times is you see here one two three so up to three it drastically decreased and then four also you can see there's a drastic decrease right after four you see it's almost like a straight line right it is still decreasing okay it will decrease up to 300 but after three there is a see from one to two two to three it's a vertical line that means you know there's a lot you know drastic increase but from three to four it is also drastic isn't it it's also like what more than 120 degree right it's almost like a vertical line but from four it is almost like horizontal line so best number of center here is four you can also have three but again three to four there is a drastic decrease here okay so this method tells you that for this data set you need to have four centers that's the best right but sometimes what happens let's say uh, the elo method might give you let's say 10 centers but you have only five people that you have hired to manage each center let's say you know you say okay we'll create data into five clusters and we'll have someone who will manage those five clusters. So in that case, you can give five also, okay? If you want to know what is the best number of cluster for the data, you use elbow method. But sometimes your business will dictate, right? You can give more or you can give less. You can give three here, you can give five or six, depending upon number of, if you have six people to manage the cluster. So you'll say, okay, even though the three is best, let me create into six cluster and each cluster will be given by, given to one of these people to manage the cluster okay so this is called your what i just showed you is k means cluster okay k means cluster uses centroid method okay so it creates centroid how do you create centroid you create points from each point to each point right and then you look at where the point meet that's the centroid if you remember your triangle session from your school days centroid method means you draw a point from vertex to the opposite side isn't it and then where the point all the points meet that's called centroid so it uses that method here you know distance is not a method connection when you talk about connection that's that's where it looks at distance okay centroid will look at the point where all the lines meet okay so the the centers will move to that point sent right okay so with that we complete our k means clustering tomorrow we'll talk about one more clustering type which is called as hierarchical clustering okay and also keep checking out the link okay uh, before afternoon i'm going to upload it you can check it after lunch okay i'm going to upload eight projects i'm going to give you the location of where data set is i'm going to give you location where you can find the code and I want you to start practicing from today, 
Okay, in next two weeks, we should be able to wrap up those projects and also our machine learning stuff. Okay, then we will start visualization and that will be our last topic. Any question before we wrap up for today?